seeing as there's probably as many different ways of altering and retouching skin colors as there are colors of skin, I'm going to stick with two which I guarantee do the job really well. One of them is really simple and gives you great results immediately. The other is a lot more complex and you'll need to have a better understanding of how colors interact. However, the results are spectacular, so it's worth the results if you're serious about doing this. First, we'll take the easy route. Of course, you'll need to make a good selection, but you may find in the case of this method we're about to do that you don't need to make a particularly good selection because it will target the skin tones by itself. But just remember, you might need to make a good quality selection anyway. We'll take that as already being done in this exercise. Okay, so I'll add in my first method, which is an adjustment layer, and it's for hue and saturation, our trusted old friend. Now, hue and saturation is broken up into three pieces. Hue, which controls the straight color. It's equivalent to the banded lines at the bottom. Push it off to the left. You're pushing into the purples and into the blues and cyans. Saturation, which enriches or desaturates the color and lightness, which as the name suggests, makes it light or makes it dark. At any time you can reset the tool on a PC by holding down the Alt key. On a Mac that will be the Option key and the Cancel button becomes a Reset button. Click and it's all set back. Okay, now I said before that you may not need to make a really high quality selection. That's because the way we're going to use this is to be specific. In the edit box there's a drop down and you can target specific colour groupings. For skin tones you'll most often be going after the reds, yellows and in some cases greens, magentas and even maybe cyan's. It depends on the skin colour but for this particular example I'm going to be going after the greens and the yellows. Now I'll start with the reds so I'll put the drop down to reds and I'll go to the hue and I'll push the hue off to the left and I'm making the flesh look a lot fleshier. That's because I'm now pushing it to this area which is magentas and purples. So that gives the effect of making the flesh look a bit fleshier. This is for Caucasian skin of course. Saturation, we can use this to saturate that colour so make it even brighter and if it's a bit too saturated we can also use lightness to compensate for this by increasing lightness and you get to keep the actual colour tone while at the same time not losing definition. Now if you're not sure if you're capturing all the colour areas that you need to affect, this little indicator here shows you the range of colours being affected. You've got some eyedroppers here that you can use to select further colours. So I'll just click on the plus eyedropper and I'll click a few times just to add to increase the colour tonal range being affected and it increases the size. You can also click and drag on these things in here to increase the range if you want to manually. Okay, I'll just reset all of this and I'll do a proper correction on this skin. Now I'll start with the reds. I'm just going to push it off to the left a little bit, increase the saturation just slightly and increase the lightness just a little bit. Now the second part for this is, as I said, yellows are also part of the skin tone. Yellows in this particular skin tone tend to control the actual glow and highlights in the skin. So I'll push the hues off to the left a little bit. So I'm taking that yellow tinge out of the glow and pushing it more towards a fleshy magenta colour. You increase the saturation, makes the skin pop a little bit more, push up the lightness and you introduce a much stronger highlight. Push it down and you dampen down the highlights. So this is actually not just a colour corrector, it does a lot of work for correcting things like hot spots to a degree at least. Have some fun with this, you can really get a lot of different effects from playing around with the reds and yellows. I'll just cancel. Method number two. This is the more complex method but it's worth the pain. It's also an adjustment layer and it's a thing called colour balance. Now colour balance, if you've been using Photoshop for a while, you may have used this to correct colour casts in your images. Now I've got to be honest, I never use this to correct colour casts. I only use this for fooling around with skin tones. Now the reason is that I've got two different control areas that give me a unique perspective on how this is going to balance out because I can target dark shadow areas mid-tones and highlights and control the absolute totality of colour range through both red, green, blue and cyan, magenta and yellow. 
You may have seen these before. Red, green and blue we normally associate with computer screens and cyan, magenta and yellow we associate with print. They are competing standards but they are also the exact opposite of each other. They do have a direct relationship. So to warm up this skin I'll push up the reds then I'll push them towards magenta and then I'll play with the yellow maybe make it a bit more blue or more yellow or maybe take out the magenta make it a little bit more green push the red towards cyan give it that slightly sickly looking color with a little bit of cyan in there balance it off with a bit of yellow towards blue there's a lot of very subtle effects that you can achieve in this color balance control but as I said you might need to take some time to learn how to use this and the interaction of different colors. There is a function under the image menu in Photoshop it's a thing called image adjustments variations. Now the variations tool is the same tool as color balance but it shows you extensive thumbnail previews of what you're doing so if you find the color balance tool just too clumsy to use start out with the variations tool and get used to the interaction of the colors and then you can come back to color balance later when you're feeling a bit more confident and you can achieve the effects far more quickly. I'll now target shadows so I'll just make the shadows a little bit more cyan and blue just darken those up a little bit now I'll compensate with a little bit of magenta just to keep the skin a little bit warm I'll go to highlights and I'll make the highlights a little bit stronger I'll just warm up those highlights balance it up with a bit of yellow take out some of that tone there with a bit of green the moves tend to be very small and that is perfectly normal that they are small moves because we're dealing with skin tones you don't want to go too crazy with this okay so I've attacked everything shadows midtones and highlights here's before and there's the after if it still looks a little bit funny shadows might be a little bit too blue I might just push the blue back down a bit bounce the cyan back down a little bit just to balance it all up fine tuning for this is half the fun of using the tool I've got to say I really do spend far too much time fooling around down here to justify what I'm doing but it's great fun playing around with the skin tones and there you go those are the two favorite tools for me at least for adjusting your skin tones get out there and start adjusting